everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. Today, while we still had the gun, this P229 that was lent to us by Guns Galore, while we still had it in our possession, I wanted to do a short video to just do a comparison between the 229 and the 226 because you might be shopping for one of these two guns and thinking, well, the 226 is just too huge. I'm going to need something smaller, so I'll look at the 229, the compact. And I think you're going to be surprised when I you know, show you some of the differences between the two that they're really not all that much different uh, like you might expect. Uh, both of them are excellent guns. Both of them are available in half a dozen to a dozen different varieties within their model line. So for example, the particular ones you're seeing on the uh, table here, the 229 is an Elite Scorpion. Being part of the Elite series, it has the front serrations and the beaver tail. Well, the 226s are available in that same series. And the 226, this is a Mark 25, which is kind of a special variant. And that particular version and a few of the others don't have the extended beaver tail. But these are also available in the Elite versions with the extended beaver tail. So feature to feature, sights, you know, beaver tails, serrations, and things like that, both of these guns are available in a variant that has those features. So what I'm going to focus on today really is just the size difference between these two overall and how it may influence what you're wanting to do. So I'm going to start with showing you they're both unloaded. So you do have two unloaded guns. And I'm going to start with a little bit on the PT-26. This is considered a full size. It's on their side as a full size and it really kind of is a classic service pistol size gun. When I pick it up I get a full three finger grip on it. Completely fills my hand. I'm up high on it. And you know this doesn't have the extended beaver tail but you can see that my you know, fingers and thumbs are, are below it. So I'm not going to get hit with this hammer. And with the higher bore axis on a SIG it's kind of hard to get hit with the hammer on a SIG. But from a size perspective I have this Colt Government Series 1911 that's unloaded, of course, that you've probably seen on the channel. And this particular 1911 is not a whole lot bigger than the SIG. So if I set the two together, you know, slide to slide, you'll see the 1911's maybe a quarter inch, uh, if so, longer from a slide perspective. When I line them up front to front like this, you'll see that if this were an Elite Series with a beaver tail, it would come close to being the same overall length as the 1911. And from a height perspective, when I set them upright, their grip heights are almost identical. This, the P226 grip angle is a little bit different you know, in the shape of the grip, so it's a little bit higher at the back and almost equal at the front. But there's minimal, if any, difference in the grip height. I'll flip them around the other way so you can you know, kind of get that perspective. You'll see that there's a little more at the back. But overall, from the, you know, the height of what I would have to try to find a place for, they're roughly the same. Uh, and of course with the 226 you get 15 rounds in the factory magazine and you get you know, between 7 and 8 rounds on average with a uh, 1911. There's a few different flavors of magazines available. So that kind of starts off with, I've got a full size service pistol here in my hand. So now let's grab the 229 and see, you know, do I have a much smaller pistol in the compact? So let's you know, show some of the size differences between them. So the, right now the SIG's in the foreground, so it, or the 229's in the foreground, so it looks a lot smaller. But let's actually put them you know, nose to nose. So if I line them up nose to nose, side by side, what you'll see is they're maybe about a quarter inch shorter on the 229 than the 226. Now if the 229, if this two, particular 226 I have here had the beaver tail, it would stick out quite a bit more. But if I'm looking slide to slide, we're maybe a quarter to a third of an inch in slide height or slide length difference. So if I line them up this way, it might be a little easier to see. I put them end to end, line up the slides, there's about the difference in the length of them. And you can kind of see it, the frames are roughly the same size in length, and then you just got this little extension on the slide that's not present on the 229. So it's not significantly shorter. From a grip height perspective, the difference is even less significant, probably a quarter inch or less in the grip height differences between the two. And you might say, okay, but you know, I'm going to get a couple extra rounds in this. Well, surprisingly, no. The factory magazine for the 226 holds 15, and the factory magazine for the 229 holds 15. It's going to be a little harder to see this one the way it's stamped, but both these magazines hold 15. Now one thing we did try when we had the 229 out at the range, 
that the 226 magazine does install, it does mount, and it does work reliably. And in this case, it doesn't really buy you anything, but the 226 TAC Ops is this factory 20 round magazine. And in theory, that factory 20 round magazine for the TAC Ops should work in both the 226 or the 229. It'll hang down a little bit more, and then you'll find that they, the pinky extender that's on it would be less useful. But there is the option of getting you know higher capacity in both of these with those extended magazines. But I was a little surprised to find that the capacity of these two was identical. Well, the only other thing that we'll look at is, you know, if you're really looking for something small, look at this little guy. So we have a 938 that is unloaded, and just look how small that is by comparison. So if you're really looking for the ultimate small, you know, something like this 938 is the ultimate in small. But of course, now you're going into the single stack territory, you're giving up capacity and stuff like that. But, you know, I just kind of brought this out just for a little bit of fun. The only other thing you'll find with either of these SIGs is these are kind of the classic SIG line. These are the SIG that you've known for years. These both come in some tactical variations like this Mark 25 with the phosphate coating. Uh, the Elite Series with the extended beaver tail and the G10 grips. So all the different, you know, tactical capabilities are out there. Of course, you know, you got the original Tacti Cool that dates, you know, over a hundred years back. You've got the 1911 and all the flavors it comes in. But trying to stick just looking at the SIG to SIG, you know, you've got two very nice guns. This one isn't significantly smaller. One of the things we did find when we had the two of these at the range is we both found it a little easier to shoot the 226 well. And it's probably just the way it fits in your hand versus when I look at the 226, or I'm sorry, the 229. I get like a two and a half finger grip on the 229, you know, and I get a full three finger grip on the 226. And the balance is just a little bit different. It's not a significant length difference, but the balance is just a hair different. The other thing that we found is the, you know, the hump at the back hits a little differently. So we'll start with the 226, make sure I get a good, good firing grip. And you'll see where the hump lies right here. Kind of just molds in with the contour of my hand. I'm up nice and high, I got it just, you know, right, and it kind of just molds right in. When I grab the 229, get that same nice high firing grip, the hump kind of hits in here, and you almost see like it's just kind of almost like a gap here. And it doesn't quite fit just right in my hand. Now, I've got average size hands, or on the muscular side, but the actual size of the hand is, is average. And that may vary depending on the size of your hands, what feels good to you, whether your hands are, are muscular or thinner. But that little bit of difference and a little bit of balance difference seemed to make a, you know, an ability to shoot it well was a little bit higher on the 226. We got back on target a little quicker and we were able to pull slightly tighter groups. Both of the guns were combat effective. Both of the guns would get the job done, but it was just a nuancey difference between the two. So if you uh, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe check out guns galore they've got this gun and many others just like it they can get just about any sig you want and have a great day